So the Vatican stands denouncing Gnosticism and pagan ways and the ways of all the other people on the planet as not having any authenticity whatsoever, that only their way is valid, even to this day. As to the countless denominations who despise Catholicism but follow in its stumbling footsteps. So, which is more true? The Jesus that wants you to be a good little boy, go to church, pay your taxes, obey your government, wave your flag, and never question authority? Or the one that told you to abandon your family if they don't obey the laws of God? And yes, he said that. The Jesus that would rather associate only with the holy religious people in their Sunday's best? Or the one who'd rather hang with the riffraff of society? The one in the Gnostic scriptures telling you to leave behind rules and regulations? Or the one who wants you to blindly believe in an infallible Bible? And even in that Bible shows him being rebellious in that regards. The one who wants you to follow the Roman Empire? Or the one who wants you to break that and all other empires and kingdoms apart and live without a king forever? Which one of, would the Roman Empire want you to follow? Exactly. That seems like an easy question to me. Now, we've only got just a little bit left to go. Uh, I still have one big-ass shocker left to show you. And after all this talk, after all this stuff about the uh, end of the world and how religion has tripped over the stumbling block of itself time and time again, we're finally going to do it. Now, we're going to turn to Revelation. <laughs> Revelation is one of those freaky things that people have stumbled over for centuries, even worse than they have, the idea of killing people over a god of love. We start off being informed that he's writing to several churches all over Asia, and then we're taken immediately for a joyride, the likes of which even Super Dave Osborne would be a little afraid of. Four freaky horsemen, seven angels blowing trumpets, stars following, following two-thirds of this and that, dying every chance they get, and a great big beast with several heads, a horrible mark you have to take or you're murdered, a whore of Babylon, one that doesn't even put out, and then they invent reality television. I know, that's scary. Way, you know, you know what too many people don't realize is that uh, the Bible is full of a lot of codes. Only initiates of certain orders could understand. This is why several times Jesus is always seen, uh, shown, and you know, as other writers in the Bible as well, for those of you who have ears to hear, in other words, those who know the code. For instance, Ezekiel wrote part of his horrible, horrible book during the Babylonian exile. Understand that usually when your people are conquered by an enemy, if you even try to speak out against the, the authorities or start trying to, trying to start a rebellion, you will get killed. So you have to speak in code. This is mentioned in the book The Da Vinci Code, and it's not untrue. It's called the Atbesh Cipher. It reverses the Hebrew alphabet, and it makes the word Sheshek become Babel. That way, they think old Zeke speaking against some place that doesn't exist. I guess they'll think he's insane or something. But the same cipher also changes the word Baphomet, a devilish-looking deity, into Sophia, the goddess of wisdom. Well, Rome was huge. It really huge. It had conquered so much of the world and taken over so many of the, uh, the lands and cultures and people that you might say... It was becoming a really big beast with many heads. Hmm. Obviously, empires and governments and civilizations are the big enemy, right? Daniel symbolically represents this as a big statue, and later on in his book, he also refers to this as an abomination that causes desolation. Revelation mentions this abomination that causes desolation as well, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's begin instead by opening the seven scrolls. The first of four give us this four freaky equestrian jockeys that you know so well. You've always heard of them as war, famine, pestilence, and death. Unless you've read Gordormans by Pratchett and Guyman, in which pestilence quits the band and pollution takes its place. Well, regardless, nothing in Revelation actually calls them by these names. Although, let's face it, Civilization has given us plenty of these things. If you always thought they were supposed to be you know, writing sometime in your future, guess again. Then he opens the fifth seal, and a bunch of whiny souls whimper and are told to shut their bitch ass and wait. 
Then he opens the sixth seal and, well, would you looky here.